Recently I developed a system for making low poly style terrain in Blender. You get this neat, really papery, kind of folded look. In this tutorial I am going to show you how to make it. This system is super easy to customize, really controllable. You can make it do it pretty much whatever you want. And since it uses geometry nodes, it can be customized pretty much infinitely. So to start, I am in Blender 3.4, though this should probably work in 3.3, I'm just not completely sure. I'm going to keep this fairly simple. This is not an incredibly complicated tutorial. To start, let's delete the cube and add a plane. Tab into edit mode, make the plane bigger. Subdivide it maybe twice. Turn on proportional editing. Select a few vertices, move them down to make a valley. Like that, that looks amazing. Now this is gonna be the basis for the terrain generation. Hit new for new node network, name this round. And the first thing we'll do is give it a subdivision surface to smooth it out. I'm gonna give it actually a lot of smoothing, maybe four or so levels. Okay, the next step is to mess it up. And I don't know if it's subdivided enough yet, but we'll see. We're gonna triangulate it with a triangulate node. That'll turn all the quads into triangles. You can click this little button, turn on the wireframes so you can see how it looks. Everything is triangles now. It's difficult to see with the grid. Let me move it up a little bit. All of our quads are now triangles. Now we're going to add a bunch of random noise to this. To do that, use a set position node. And for the offset, just use a random value. And this is uh, not exactly what we want. If you add a vector math node, you can switch it to multiply, which gives you control over all the different axes of randomization. So Z, X, and Y. We're gonna leave the Z at zero, but make the X and Y maybe 0.1. Must set all the minimum values to negative one so that it gets displaced in both directions, both positive and negative. Now we can turn these up something, maybe, I don't know, 1.1. That's pretty violent. Okay, I'm gonna give that a go and see how it goes. Maybe we can subdivide it at another level. Use a subdivide node. Just a plain subdivide node and leave it on one. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn this back down a little bit. 0.8 maybe. Okay, let's try it at 0.8. Also, if you haven't yet, you should go check out my newsletter, The Blend, which has now achieved the grand total of 16 subscribers. The stuff on here is actually starting to get pretty good. I highly recommend it, but my opinion might be slightly biased. Okay, the next step is to flatten this out a little bit. This is just too crazy. To do that, use another set position node and a Geometry Proximity. Plug your base geometry into the target and the out output position into the position. Plug that into the offset. Actually, let's try putting this back in the position. Ah, yes. No, that's correct. That's much better. Though it seems to be using our original geometry, which is not what we want. Let's take the one out of the subdivision surface instead. Ah, there you go. Much, much better. And it looks awful with the wireframes on, but if you turn them off, is much better. Okay, the next step is to add noise, which we'll do with another set position node. We just duplicate that one, add a noise texture, and we can just plug this color into the offset, add a vector math node, set that to scale. Now you can control the strength of the noise, but the problem with noise textures is that this color output goes from zero to one. It's in this range, and we want an output that goes also includes negative values so that it'll be displaced in negative directions as well. So to fix that, we can simply subtract a little bit from it, duplicate this, and switch it to subtract, set it to 0.5. If the output is from 0 to 1 and you subtract 0.5, then it will, it will be from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, which is perfect. We'll simply just take this bit and the scale node just multiplies that by some value and makes it bigger or smaller. So now it includes negative and positive values, which is ideal. Okay, now this looks too fine. We're gonna have to turn the scale on this noise way, way down to get what we're looking for. Try something like 0 0.05. There we go. Now we can crank up the scale. It's looking good and add more detail. The detail is really what helps here. It adds these nice little bumps and displacements. You can adjust the roughness to just how nasty it looks. And the distortion might help but maybe not. You can pretty much tweak this endlessly, so maybe turn it back down a little bit. Looks like an ocean, I'm gonna go a little weaker. It depends a lot on what you're looking for, but I think these polygons might still be a bit big. I'm gonna turn this up another notch, and now they look horribly stretched. Um, okay, and the, notice the noise is displacing it, the mesh in all directions. I think we only want to use the Z direction, so we'll only displace stuff up and down, which will probably help it look a lot nicer. We can use a separate XYZ and a 
combine x, y, z and simply connect the z values and none of the other values. So now the offset is 0, 0 and the noise. Okay, just the strength of this now. Oh, that looks a lot nicer. Well, this is something you'll want to play with depending on the scene it's going to be for, but this is a general idea. And for a material, I always just use a default material with some color. Extremely simple. And maybe some roughness. A quick tip for an amazing low poly lighting is just to use the default sky texture. And make sure you're in cycles because this does not work in Eevee. This gives you controls for the size of the sun, like the softness of the shadows, the elevation, which is how low the sun is, like sunset or sunrise or midday. Generally, a lower value gives a cooler result, and the rotation is just like a Z rotation for the entire sky. The problem with this is usually that it's too bright, and you could adjust the strength here, but a better solution is to go over here in the render settings, open up the color management tab, and adjust the ex exposure which ends up giving a more realistic look because it adjusts everything evenly. There's a lot of customization that can be done here. For example, you can go back into edit mode and pretty much just move this around and create your own terrain simply by adjusting points here. You can add edge loops if you need them or subdivide it more. Anything should work. Just watch out for subdividing it too high because Blender does not like that. And this is the final result. Here's a screenshot of a render I did the other day using this technique. In this one, I instance simple trees all over it. Trees are also done in nodes, and I might show how to do those in a future tutorial. But I made this exact same terrain and used the sky texture just like that. You can see it makes a very nice mountain view type scene. And I added a volume cube to make the fog, which also looks really nice. But the terrain is really the best part here because it's random, but still low poly. Okay, thanks for watching. If there's anything else you want to see a tutorial on, make sure you leave that in the comments and I might consider it.